cool. Well, thank you everyone for coming and coming to my webinar and just giving this time to yourself to learn a little bit more about scoliosis and a little bit more about exercise and what we can be doing to actually help our scoliosis because there are things that we can do obviously as you see me on Instagram always trying to spread the good word and motivate you guys to start looking after your scoliosis a little bit more so I'll just give a very brief introduction about myself so I am Claudia I go by Claudia Catherine which is actually my middle name but I just like the way that it sounds and um, I obviously go by the feel good spine on my social media so it's all about scoliosis but just getting your whole body and mindset and everything to feel good so that's really what kind of led me into the name of that app for my business um, I am a personal trainer and a yoga teacher and I have been working in the fitness industry for over five years now I started my career as um, like a weight loss and toning um personal trainer who worked with mostly women I did pre and postnatal work as well and then I as my career progressed, obviously now I specialize in helping people with scoliosis. I have scoliosis myself, severe three curve scoliosis. Um, it has progressed over the years whilst I was neglecting it and not doing anything for it. So that really kind of pushed me to where I am now because now that I have started doing things for it and helping other people with scoliosis, I have seen that it is possible to create change. So that is why I am here today. And that is a little bit about myself. So I'm gonna come in to my exercise and scoliosis presentation. Let me, there we go. Okay, so before I start this presentation, I just wanna point out that it's not gonna be about how to fix and cure and get a straight spine because especially um, with structural scoliosis which is probably the majority of us here today it is it is impossible to get a straight spine so I just have to be kind of straight up about that but what we can do is create a strong spine that supports our body that supports our scoliosis and that is like it's going to stop the or slow the progression it's going to reduce pain and it can even reverse the curvature by creating this strong spine so it's about a strong spine not a straight spine so that's what we're going to be getting into today the most important thing that you can do for your scoliosis is to know your scoliosis to know your curvatures to be an expert of your own body no one else is going to do this for you. You have to take the time to learn about your own curvature. If you can get an x-ray, amazing, but it's not 100% necessary. You can feel it all out and get help with it as well. So you need to know what kind of curve do you have? Is it right thoracic? Is it right lumbar? Is it left thoracic? Is it right thoracic, left lumbar? Is it thoracal lumbar? There's so many different variations and curve types that we can have. You need to know how many curves you have as well. So you might have one major curve, which is very common, but then you might have like a secondary compensation curve or two compensation curves. For example, this is actually an X-ray of my spine. So I have right thoracic left lumbar scoliosis. Um, you can see, so the, knowing your concave and convex areas is so important like that you can't really create change of your scoliosis without knowing the differences between these two so for an example um these ribs here i hope that you can see my little mouse moving around um that is that's the concave area so that's my concave side where the ribs are compressed together and that's my left side here that's kind of rotating forward then you can see my right side rib cage. So the ribs are spread apart and that's the rib hump. That's the convex side that's pushing backwards. So it's kind of like twisting me back like this and creating that not very nice rounded rib hump section at the back, which we all don't like. Trust me, I know I get it. It's the bane of my life, but yeah, it's just the way that it is. So you just need to know your concave and convex areas. 
and you can see the difference in the ribs so that's why it's you know it's important we're going to be talking about concavity breathing where you will be focusing your breath into this side of the rib cage so i just want you to see what the concave ribs really do look like i mean my my scoliosis is slightly severe so yours probably might not look like this might not be as compressed but just so you can see an idea of what a concave and a convex side looks like okay so nice and simple is exercise safe with scoliosis yes Yes, it is safe. Don't let anyone tell you that it is not safe. I have heard physios and doctors telling people to not move and to be immobile and it drives me crazy, <laughs> crazy. But movement is so important for our body. Movement is medicine. Movement is the driver, the primary driver of healing pain. So we need to be able to move and we need to stay strong, which brings me into my next slide. Why? Why do we need to exercise? There are three million reasons that I could give you about why we should exercise, but I'm going to keep it specific to scoliosis. Firstly, our core strength and stability. So the core's function and the core, by the way, is not just your abdominal muscles. Your core is everything in your trunk. It is your back. It is your glutes and your hips. It is your shoulder stabilizers. It is everything that surrounds your spine because the, the, core main, the core's main function is to support the spine, protect the spine, to stop the spine from getting like big forces pushed against it and all those kind of things. So we need to keep a, a strong core. And that's not just your abs, that is everything in your trunk because weak muscles do not support the spine. So it's going to cause more pain it's going to cause more progression of your curvature if the muscles that support your spine are weak the body is lazy okay the body wants to follow the path of least resistance so if you have a curve in your spine your body is not going to be like oh i'm just going to straighten it up because your body wants to conserve energy and straightening your spine if you sit up straight like i'm doing now it's tiring it's exhausting my body just wants to collapse into my curvature so building that strong muscle, building that base for your core is going to help hold you up So, and stop reducing the progression of your curvature. So if the muscles are weak, it's not supporting you, things progress. And then I'll just go on to the fact that it does help, obviously, mental health as well is a huge aspect with scoliosis. We are prone to get more anxiety, to get more depression. Unfortunately, it's just obviously having this debilitating thing on the back of our minds all the time can create these kind of thoughts. And I've been through it as well. So I totally understand why. So that's why exercise has really saved me. And it's really helped a lot of my clients to deal with these mental health issues. And it affects everything in your life, your diet, your sleep, your mindset. If you're exercising, you're going to be starting to look after what you're eating you're going to be sleeping better. Your mindset's going to be a little bit better. It improves everything. I could do a whole workshop on it. Maybe I will one day, but for now, we're going to go on to the next slide. So correctives and exercise, are they the same thing? I'm going to go yes and no. So I'm going to start with no, they're not the same thing because correctives just focus on your scoliosis. So for example, in this picture, I am doing Schroth, which I'm going to come into in a moment. Um, you can see that it has kind of, it's corrected and aligned my spine and I'm breathing into my concave areas here. I know exactly where I need to place my bean bags. This one is placed for my neck curve and this one is placed for my lumbar curve. I do need to have my head raised a little bit here and it does bother me in this picture, but that's why we take these pictures so I can see how I should be correcting myself because I'm just doing this. I'm a one man show over here. So it, it helps me to do this. Um, <laughs> can you do corrective and exercise together? Absolutely, yes. The way that I train myself as a personal trainer, the way that I work with my scoliosis clients is bringing the whole thing together because I just like to not waste time. Well, sometimes I'll do correctives and then I'll exercise, but there are ways to bring it all together. 
So I'm going to come into that. Before I do that, I'm going to just outline correctives, what they are. The, the scoliosis queen is Shroth. So, I mean, if you've heard of Shroth, raise your hand. <laughs> it is, yeah, it's really, really important. Um, and it is, I call it the scoliosis queen because it is the most, it is the fundamental to all scoliosis corrective exercises, pretty much. So without it, like, I don't know. I don't know what we'd be doing, to be honest. Like um, Kat Katharina Schroth, German lady back in the start of the 1900s, created this system and it has really helped and created the fundamentals for everything. Long story short, it's about lengthening your spine and de-rotating using 3D rotational breathing. So concavity breathing, as I keep barking on about. Um, Again, you can see me doing some shroth up here, lengthening my spine, and I'm breathing into my concave area, which is here. And here I have combined shroth with flowability, which I will be getting onto in a minute. But basically I have, this is just me completely relaxed. And then here I've come into a flowability position whilst taking into account the shroth theory of getting, so I know how to lengthen my spine. I know how to kind of put the blocks back on top of each other and kind of correct everything. And then in that, I will do the flowability. So I'm pushing my elbows into the wall, squeezing this block together as hard as I can, squeezing my core, squeezing my glutes like this. It doesn't look like I'm doing much, but this is hard work. I'll tell you that. And basically, I'm trying to get the natural kyphosis back through my upper back. For my scoliosis, um, my upper back is actually a little bit lordotic, which is not what we want. We want it to be kyphotic. So I'm working on trying to get regain that and breathing back into my concave area. So that's just an example of how you can bring other exercises with your correctives and kind of bring it in all together. Habits. So once we know our scoliosis correctives, we actually need to implement them into our daily routine because I'm sure you have been to physios or maybe you've seen a stroth therapist or maybe you've worked with someone before and they've given you things to do and you've maybe done them once or twice or three times and then you just kind of stop doing it. So one thing I really, really focus on is creating those daily scoliosis habits for myself with my clients and for everybody listening, for everyone that I can help inspire to start doing this daily routine because that is where you see change. For example, this picture at the top, I'm just lying on my side, not doing my correctives. Here I am doing, this is another shroff corrective. I'm actually laying on my other side here. You can see, you can see how the spine corrects. Imagine doing this every single day, every day, even if it's only five minutes, 10 minutes. Imagine if you could do it half an hour every day. Like you can see how this will change the shape of your spine eventually. If you stay consistent and you start getting into a routine, it is possible for me. It is possible for you as well. It's just getting into um, the mindset of habits, which we will come into a little bit more. Okay. Exercising with scoliosis. So that's what we're all here for. What should we be doing? How should we be doing it? How I like to exercise with scoliosis is bringing my correctives and my workouts kind of together into one thing, being efficient with my time and also keeping my body healthy, but at the same time, looking after my scoliosis. So yoga for scoliosis, scoliopilates, flowabilities, workout sets with correctives thrown in. So whether you're working out at the gym or you're working out at home, there are ways to do it where you are incorporating correctives into your workouts, which is awesome, I find. Um, so I'm gonna come into, I will be covering yoga for scoliosis flowability and the like gym workouts thing. I wanna be learning more about scolio pilates. I'm gonna be doing that in January, but that is not currently my forte. So I'm just gonna leave that one out for now. But there are lots of amazing people doing this kind of stuff. And I have done scolio pilates myself, so I really do appreciate it. I just don't know it well enough to teach it yet. So we'll come back to that. So it's not what you do, but how you do it. That's just with, with every exercise, with everything that we're going to talk about, 
proper form is really, really important and knowing your spine and being conscious of your scoliosis. So I'm going to use a bird dog, for example, as I'm sure you've been given this probably by a physio or something before in the past. It's just like the go-to physio exercise where they don't really know what else to do, but it is, it is a great core strengthening exercise. So in the top, you can see that I have got my hips and my ankles and everything aligned. I'm reaching through the crown of my head and I'm pushing back through my foot and just keeping this whole core area strong, not letting it sink down. Here, this is just an example I found of someone off the internet, but this is not what not to do. So this is why you need to be cautious of your form when you're doing exercise, because the way that she's lifting her leg if you had scoliosis, this is pushing you more into your concave areas. This would be, yeah, this whole thing will be pushing you into your scoliosis, into your concavities and making things worse. So you can think that you're doing something to help you, but if you're not paying proper attention to your alignment and your form, you could actually be making it worse. So I just wanted to bring attention to that and make sure that you really do have proper form when you are exercising, which we will be coming to. So my baby, as you know, I am a yoga teacher. I've been a yoga teacher for many years. I studied yoga over in India. I love yoga. I teach it every week. Um, so I'm a little bit biased. I'll tell, I'll tell you that. But why the yoga for scoliosis is a thing. And it's taught by Elisa Milling Browner, who I, I studied my part one and part two with, who's really, really awesome, lovely lady, so knowledgeable. And she teaches this stuff. So... Um, yeah, so why we should be doing it, it focuses on lengthening your spine and concavity breathing. When you're doing the actual yoga for scoliosis, it's bringing in your correctives into your workout at the same time. So you can be holding a yoga pose and at the same time, breathing in your concavities and lengthening your body. So not only are you getting strong and you're doing exercise, but you're doing something good for your scoliosis at the same time. The other thing I love about yoga is that it brings in mindset and mental health. So you focus a lot on spirituality, meditation, there's lots of breath work, which in other forms of exercise you don't really have. So especially if you have anxiety or you're stressed, this could be a good option for you to try and get into because it's going to help relax the body, bring you into your parasympathetic nervous system, and just kind of overall, like just help everything. It's also good for mobility and flexibility. So if you're tight and you're sore and you want to get a good stretch, like this is obviously yoga is good for that. People are going to tell you this all the time. If you're tight is to do yoga. <coughs> Pardon me. So what, why is it different to normal yoga? What about normal yoga? Normal yoga is still great and I will encourage I will encourage people to do normal yoga. I still do it like normal yoga, but I, I teach it every week. But there are things to be aware of, which I am going to come to in a couple more slides, but just getting into deep um, flexion, getting into big extensions, big twists and stuff like that. If you're in a yoga class and your teacher is not familiar with scoliosis, they might try and push you into positions that we shouldn't really be into. So I encourage yoga, but I just want you to be mindful of your scoliosis when you are doing yoga. And even better, if you can just get to a yoga for scoliosis class, that's, you know, then you're, then you're safe. Then you're in the safe zone. So I'm going to point out a couple of yoga for scoliosis moves that I love working with. This is one of my clients, Steph. We're in a child's pose. So this is a really common pose, nice relaxation. What we're doing here, so she has um, right thoracolumbar lumbar scoliosis. So we have placed a couple of towels underneath her concave areas, which at the front is actually the convex side, but I'm just going to keep it simple um, and say that we're putting this underneath her concave areas. And then she's going to put her head and her arms here. And it's basically lengthening her whole spine and allowing her to breathe. So this is her concave side. And she's trying to breathe into this area whilst kind of contracting this side. So it's going to help with that derotation of the spine. And obviously you're getting that lengthening in. So you can see how Schroth is kind of, Schroth principles are brought in 
to these kind of movements. Again, I don't know if you can really tell the difference between these two. Lighting was not on my side when I was taking these pictures, but this is um, Steph in full flexion of her spine. I didn't get her to hold this for very long because this is not good, but you can see, so this is her convex side, this, this kind of rib hump area. She doesn't have much rotation, so it's not super obvious, but this side is pushing up more. Then I got her to do her scoliosis correctives. So she's not got as much flexion through the spine, which is totally fine, but she's pushing up more through that concave side. So this is what we want to see. This is going to help. And then this rib hump side is kind of flattened down a little bit. So she's derotated her rib cage and come into that flexion. So it's helped to to work on her scoliosis whilst also just getting some nice movement through the spine and having a workout. Okay, so coming on to flowability. What the hell is flowability? I hear you say. <laughs> it is, it's weird. It's weird and it's different and it's new. And I can tell you now that there is really not many people out here doing this. I was extremely lucky back when I was a personal trainer at Equinox one of the um, the top trainers there got into the system during um, COVID when everything was shut down. So he was working with trainers in California who designed this system. And he went, once the gym opened up again, he, we came in and he's doing this weird stuff. And we're like, Adrian, what are you doing? All the trainers. And eventually he gave us he started giving us workshops on it. And then I actually worked with him privately, him as my trainer, teaching me about the flowability system because I saw how it was really beneficial for people with scoliosis. So going through what I am doing here, this is a glute bridge, but this is a flowability glute bridge where I am, I've got my rib cage and my pelvis aligned. So this is one thing with scoliosis is our rib cage and our pelvis is all over the place and it's probably not aligned and it's twisted and it's not it's not in the alignment that it should be so what i love about flowability is it really brings that attention to your rib cage and your pelvis at the same time i'm lengthening through my hip flexors so this tends to be super tight this area if you have scoliosis and strengthening my glutes at the same time and i'm holding this position look i am not happy about this i am breathing as hard as i can squeezing and holding it's all kind of isometric movements with your breath here i am so one thing flowability it is spine conscious training so it's basically trying to get your spine into its most functional and optimal position so it is about changing the shape of your spine using your breath, which is what we're trying to do with Schroff theory. So it all kind of comes together. But you can see my spine looks really good here. I love this picture because I am nice and aligned. I've got nice kyphosis in the upper back. I've got nice lordosis in the, in the lower back. I'm reaching the crown of my head forward and my tailbone back. And I am long. So I've lengthened my whole scoliosis here. My rib cage is in line with my pelvis. I am squeezing. This is hard. Like I am sweating here, holding this position and breathing like, like big exhales that, that really tighten the core. So that's the fundamentals of flowability. And I love using it in a way to help scoliosis. So it, it's weird. You can look into it more. I think flowability.com. Um, and there's a whole app and everything that, that I have. And there's classes that you can do on a weekly basis and stuff if you want to try and learn a little bit more about it. Or I'm happy to help if you have any questions. But yeah, it's the system and I'm, I'm going to push it and get it out into the world because people with scoliosis need to know about this system. It's new, like literally two, three years, years old. So maybe in 10 years, people will, will like finally pick it up, you know. <laughs> okay. Weighted workout. So whether you're at the gym or at home, you know what I mean when you're, you're working out with your weights. Um, you know, what am I, I'm doing a step up here. So you can work out with weights. I encourage it. And even home workouts with weights or bands or whatever you've got, do exercise, trust me. But you want to focus on these three things. So keeping your spine aligned and your scoliosis corrected whilst you're doing the exercise. So for example, in my step up here, 
I have really taken a moment before, before I'm about to stand up to lengthen my whole spine, do my scoliosis correct, correctives, and then I go into the movement. So I am strengthening my spine. I'm strengthening my scoliosis whilst working out and strengthening my whole body rather than not doing your correctives and then strengthening your spine with that in that curved position, if that makes sense. So really focusing on your form and strength, like straightening your spine as much as possible before you exercise. If you start to notice during your exercise that you're collapsing back, maybe that's time to, to stop your, those amount of reps. Maybe you've done too many reps, the weight is too heavy, Make sure that your, your spine is your number one priority. You need to make sure your spine is straight and long. If you start to collapse, it's time to stop or regress with the weights. You can throw in corrective exercises in between your sets, which I love doing as well. So for example, I am hanging here. If you're in a gym, there are 300 things that you can hang off. Trust me, you can find them everywhere. Squat racks, hanging racks, like just... There's just things everywhere that you can hang from. Um, so hang. <laughs> Hanging is one of the best ways to, to lengthen your spine, that traction, decompression. You see me doing traction all the time on Instagram. It is that decompression of the spine, that lengthening of the spine. In this position, I am focusing my breath into that concave area. I'm not holding it here for hours. I'm literally here for 30 seconds, but that's basically just decompress and lengthen your spine. So you, you'll come off standing up taller and then you can go back into your set and repeat. And then warm up properly, guys. Don't just walk into the gym and start doing deadlifts or squats. Like, especially with scoliosis, you really need to warm up your body properly. So, and I'm gonna bring, bring special attention to your glutes and core because this is what's gonna hold you upright. This is what's going to help your scoliosis from going more into its curvature. You need to have your muscles ready to work out. So really take some time. I love starting my warming up with some glute bridges, warming up with um, some gentle core exercises. I'll show you in a second, just to really make sure that I am prime and ready. And I also do some concavity breathing before I start. So that's, and that's just literally lying on my back being aware of my spine, being aware of my curve, and then I'm breathing, but I'm sending my breath to the areas, the concave areas, which sounds weird, but honestly, it works. And it might not work for you the first time you try it. It might not work for you the second time you try it, but you just have to keep going. And the more that you practice, the more you're going to feel it. And you just have to really stay consistent and trust the process because if at first you might take three breaths and be like I don't feel anything but just bear with the process like you, you can you can help derotate your spine just using your breath and breathing into those concave areas so things to avoid when you are working out Getting into the full range of motion of flexion, extension, twisting, and lateral bending. So for example, flexion is when you're rounding your back, where, when you're in extension, you're lifting your chest and kind of arching through the back. So with crunches, for example, if you're in a workout class or maybe you work with a personal trainer who doesn't understand scoliosis and they're getting you to do crunches, this is really not good for scoliosis and I'll explain why. So with structural scoliosis, the, the, the vertebrae of the curve tend to become like a, a wedge shape as they curve around your spine. So if you think of a doorstop, for example, so your, your vertebrae become like that to some degree. So if you imagine pushing, putting pressure against a doorstop, it's always going to push into the side, the, the biggest um, side of the vertebrae, if that makes sense. It's going to kind of push up into your scoliosis and make things work. So that's with any kind of compression, flexion, extension, twisting, lateral bending, any compression of the spine, every time think of that doorstep and that wedge pushing you into your scoliosis. So that's what we want to avoid that kind of compression. And when you're doing crunches, you are compressing your spine in that way. So it's gonna push you 
more into your curvature. So what I recommend instead of crunches and things like yoga, like when you're just doing normal yoga and you're doing like crazy forward folds or arches. And I've done all this in the past and I really do think that that made my scoliosis worse because I was doing crazy yoga teacher stuff, just ignoring my scoliosis, which was not the way to go about life. Um, but that's a whole different story. We work on it now. We have learned from my lessons. I want you guys to learn from my lessons as well. So don't over push your spine into flexion, extension, twisting or lateral bending. This core exercise here, I'm laying down on my back. I got my ribs and pelvis aligned. So there is no flaring through the rib cage here. I'm working on pushing my ribs down. This is my con cave side. So this side of my body wants to push up away from the ground. I use my breath to push this side down into the ground. Then I am doing some just gentle foot taps, alternating my feet from side to side. And this is absolutely killing my core more than crunches. I've never even liked crunches even before I started really paying attention to scoliosis. This I find is just so much better. It's going to be good for your spine. This is one example. There are so many other things. There are standing exercises like Paloff press that you can do, um, which is anti-rotation, which is really good for your core. Planking variations. Um, obviously any of these supine kind of movements there there is a lot that we can do instead of crunching russian twists no 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 don't be doing russian twists um it's really i mean it's bad for people anyway regardless of scoliosis because your lumbar spine is supposed to be stable it's not supposed to like rotate crazy at speeds all the time so i would definitely avoid russian twists and um and lateral bending so you know you see people doing this exercise like with a hold of weight and they'll do this and you think that it's kind of like strengthening one side of your body but really you're just every time you're that wedge is going like and you're just pushing yourself more into your scoliosis whether you're going this way or whether you're going that way it's still compression and it's still pushing you into your scoliosis so just being aware of that Okay, vigorous activity. Can we still do it? Absolutely, yes. Yes, we can. If you love doing hip workouts, you love running, you love jumping, horse riding, for example, trampolining, there's all these things that require a lot of force on the body. And I'm going to say absolutely, yes, still do them. If they make you happy, then do the things that make you happy. But you need to be focusing on proper technique. So like, like I keep saying, corrected spine, when you're doing these things, when you're running, for example, trying not to really rotate through your spine, you want to run forward. And tomorrow I have a whole podcast coming out on running, which is really, really interesting. I learned a lot of stuff um, interviewing a running specialist, but basically not like just being aware of how you're doing things, how it might be affecting your spine. Hit workouts, if someone is getting you to do 100 crunches, Maybe you say, I'm going to do some supine foot taps or some dead bugs or some bird dogs or something instead. So you're not doing that repetitive flexion and crunching into your spine every time, like where your vertebrae are smashing into each other. So just being aware of those kind of things, getting those regular scoliosis corrective exercises into your day. Everyone's scoliosis is different. Obviously, it's hard for me to help everyone individually without seeing your spines and stuff like that but it is it is you 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 have correctives that can help your spine so it's just learning what they are and then getting into a consistent routine of doing them every day or five times a week but just trying to do something <laughs> okay and then obviously supplementing any kind of movement with core and glute strengthening so again getting that strong foundation for your body, your glutes hold you up correctly, the work, like they hold your posture up, your core protects your spine. If you're going to be doing all these things like horse riding and stuff, do some core and glute exercises and just make sure that your whole body is strong if you're going to do these kind of vigorous activities. Next. 
Okay, so there are gentle things that we can do as well, which I encourage trying if you haven't. We, movement is medicine. So any kind of movement that you are doing is going to be good for you. Swimming, you've probably heard people say swimming is the cure for scoliosis. It is not the cure for scoliosis. Corrective exercise is the cure for scoliosis, but swimming is what's going to help like get you moving and the, the water takes away the gravitational forces on your spine. So it kind of just relieves the pressure that we have every day on our spine and it's just a way to work out. It's hard, swimming is hard, it's good cardiovascular health. So if you're looking for something a little bit more gentle where you're moving, that's gonna be good for your spine, swimming is great for that. Going for walks, highly underrated. I love going for walks. I walk everywhere, every day. Like it, honestly, I swear it keeps me really fit. And it's, you know, it, it's also good for your mental health, getting outside, get away from technology for a minute, get away from whatever's stressing you at home and just go for a walk. I know it's cold, wrap up warm, but get outside, get outside and move your body. It makes you feel so much better afterwards. And then obviously yoga. Like you don't have to do vigorous, crazy yoga. You can just do restorative yoga or yin yoga. That's going to help relax the body, relax the mind, and also just stretch out your spine. There are things that you can do that are gentle. Pilates, like all these things to just get your body moving in some kind of way. You need to find what works for you and try and make a consistent routine out of it. Okay, we can't talk about exercise without bringing in the external factors as well that really, really do matter to your whole body and your whole health. So your nutrition, your sleep, your mental health, stress factors in your life, all these kind of things contribute to your scoliosis, contribute to progression, contribute to pain in your scoliosis. So you really want to be aware of what you are putting into your body. The cells in our body are literally made from what we eat. So you have the power to create really, really good cells, or you can create bad cells in the body. And bad cells are going to contribute towards releasing stress hormones. They're going to contribute towards things like diabetes and blood pressure and cancer and all these things. So we want to make sure that we are feeding our body with wholesome, nutritious foods, and it is going to affect your mental health. It's going to affect everything. Inflammation, pain with scoliosis is usually, you know, inflammation is a big part of that. So if you're eating inflammatory foods, it's going to make the pain worse. So you really want to be careful about what you are putting in your body. Ginger and lemon, one of my favorite things in the, in the world, ginger lemon tea, anti-inflammatory, really good antioxidant kind of things just starting to put these little things into your diet i could also go on about this all day but i won't so sleep we need to make sure that we are sleeping well and this can be a huge problem with scoliosis because i know it can be painful i know it can be irritating to sleep with scoliosis there are definitely ways to sleep that can help our scoliosis there are ways that we sleep that can make things worse again um this is not a workshop on that i could go on about this all day as well but there are there are ways to sleep that are going to be beneficial for our scoliosis but this is where the recovery and the repair happens at night so if you're not getting enough sleep and by enough sleep i mean at least six hours but ideally 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 eight hours of sleep a night that is the goal every time you're not giving your body enough time to repair and recover. So if you're getting lots of pain in the body, think about, am I sleeping enough? Am I giving my body enough time to actually repair itself, to actually try and recover from the pain, from the inflammatory thing? It needs, it really does need time to, to, to sleep, to repair itself. So look after your body. Mindset. How are you thinking in your head? Like, when you're waking up in the morning, um, I, well, when I wake up in the morning, I, I'm thinking to myself, I am someone who looks after her scoliosis. So the first thing I do is my scoliosis corrective exercises. And that is a habit I've been 
trying to do consistently, but the mindset has really helped. Waking up thinking, I am someone who helps my scoliosis. When you when you start to think like this in any in any way, in anything in life, thinking I am someone who eats healthy, I am someone who wants to go to the gym. All these little affirmations in your life can make a huge difference to your mindset and how you go about your day, daily routine. So starting to really think about how you're thinking about things in your head, things like meditation, things like journaling, all those kind of standard stuff that you'll see everywhere. They do help. That's why people do say them. Um, I love like um, guided meditations that I listen to and they just kind of, I listen to them in the morning and they get me all hyped up for the day. So I recommend trying something like that if you haven't tried it before. Oh, I didn't realize how dry my mouth was for a second there. Okay, <laughs> sorry, one second. <coughs> it's a lot of talking. <laughs> okay, so yes, looking after your mindset, looking after your sleep, all these things play a huge role in your scoliosis. So once you start bringing all these things together, improving all of these things, you're going to see an improvement in your scoliosis. And I promise you that. Okay. Where are we? Oof. Summary. So let's just summarize everything I've just been chatting about. Exercise is safe. So don't listen to anyone who tells you to be sedentary. Movement is the primary driver of healing. You need to move and able to heal and help your spine. It's really, if, you, if you're in pain, the worst thing you can do is nothing. So you obviously, if you're in a severe pain, you need to just kind of like, if you've just injured yourself, wait for it to heal. But you need to keep moving in order to stop that pain from coming back. Then you, you need to find what you like. What, what, what out of all the things I've just mentioned, or maybe things I haven't mentioned, like jujitsu and all these other random things that you can do, find something you enjoy and try and do it consistently. Get out moving, moving your body. Know your spine know your scoliosis, know your curvatures. That is really the key to being able to help it. So I'm here to help if you have any questions, if you want to, I have people sending me pictures of their spines and stuff all the time. And I am happy to help because I really do know what it is like to obviously live with scoliosis. And I want to be able to share the knowledge and stop other people going through the anxiety and the depression and stuff like that and actually start making changes to your scoliosis and to your spine and to your mindset. So I'm always happy to help incorporating those daily corrective exercises into your routine. So putting it simply lengthening your spine through some form of traction. There are so many different ways. Concavity breathing. So knowing your concave sides and breathing into your con concavities. If you can do traction and concavity breathing at the same time, you are winning. That is going to be awesome. You can do this. Try and just start with five minutes a day, okay? And then just try and grow from there. But honestly, you're gonna feel so much better once you start incorporating these scoliosis correctives into your daily routine. Honestly, the amount of times I say scoliosis, which you turn it into like a drinking game or something. Like every time I say it, everyone has to drink. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Too early in the morning for that. <laughs> Looking after every aspect of your life. So like, I, like I've explained, but really everything that you do on a daily basis, what you are eating, how you are moving, who your friends are, who like, what are you, what are you absorbing from the media? What are you absorbing from the news and social media and all these kind of things that can really impact your way of thinking, impact your life? You need to kind of take a step back and, and think like, Am I living in a positive environment? Am I, or is there a lot of negativity coming towards me? And then what can you do to change that? Because once you start seeing the positives in things and, and looking after and respecting your own mental health, that's when you'll really start to change your body. 
once you learn to love your body once you learn to love yourself you'll wake up and be like I'm gonna work out today or I'm gonna do my concavity breathing like I love my body I want my body to function as well as possible I'm gonna to put this time aside in my day make this a priority to do something good for myself so yes looking after every aspect of your body is really going to help one sip of water okay so we're coming towards the end <clears throat> sorry about that we are uh, okay so if you've enjoyed kind of everything that i've said or you want to learn more or kind of see other things that i'm doing obviously there are some options if you want to work with me you can work for me for free which is um i'm on youtube and i'm i'm actually really excited i've got this christmas series coming out 12 days of cormus um where i will be releasing um these like core glute workouts for 12 days coming up to christmas um so that's going to be obviously all free and i would love you guys to kind of join in on that and get it's only like 10 15 minute workouts every day scoliosis friendly and just really really trying to help you guys strengthen your core strengthen your glutes and bring awareness to your scoliosis so i'm gonna be doing that um obviously in december um i have a couple of yoga workouts and core workouts stuff already on youtube that you can do this is all new for me. Like I am, I am new on YouTube. I'm new to this. I have been doing scoliosis stuff for a while, but I just decided in like August, like I should really come out on social media and do this kind of stuff. So I'm still kind of building it up and there will be more stuff coming. I do talk about lifestyle tips as well on YouTube, on Instagram. I have a podcast if, if you haven't listened to it yet. Um, just more of me chatting pretty much like this. <laughs> but you can listen to it on Spotify or Apple or whatever and um yeah I've got some interesting I've got my pot my running podcast coming out tomorrow I'm going to be doing a whole podcast on flowability so I'm actually interviewing one of the flowability trainers on Wednesday and we're going to be talking all about that so you can you'll oh my god he's so smart so you'll learn a lot more stuff about flowability because he'll explain it all a lot better than me um and you can start to incorporate that system into your life a little bit as well so that's kind of some three free ways that you can get this knowledge that i'm putting out into the world i do offer um like one-on-one -on -one training as well so i do scoliosis coaching i do three month packages so through my experience as a personal trainer and as a coach it really does take at least three months to really see some transformation to really see results and i like to work very closely with my clients kind of intensely because you need consistency and you need that someone kind of breathing down your neck all the time to make you do it for the first three months and then i really try and get my clients to then i i give every client like an ebook of everything that we've done and then i get them to try and do it themselves for the rest of their life if they want to continue trading that's totally fine but it's just like three months of like intensive scoliosis work so we do scoliosis specific, specific training all the corrections i've just talked about and getting into an exercise routine obviously designed specifically for your scoliosis in my transformation package it's 24 sessions so that's two weeks two times a week for three months and i also do habit and sleep coaching with that as well so building those daily corrective scoliosis habits where I am on your case every single day have you done your scoliosis correctives tell me yes tell me yes now that kind of stuff and um sleep coaching as well so really making sure that you're trying to get your eight hours of sleep because that is really important and then my VIP package so that's 36 sessions which is three sessions a week for three months all the same as the above and then on top of that we do nutrition coaching and life coaching as well so talking about what you're eating every day i offer meal plans and stuff like that for clients who want it and life coaching we do um, an extra 30 minute call a month just talking about your life and stress and all things that we can improve on in your whole life so the way i work with my clients it's not I'm not like a physio who's going to give you a couple of exercises and then kind of send you on your way. 
I am with you constantly for three months and really kind of trying to change your life and your perspective and everything about your scoliosis, but also your diet, your nutrition, your sleep, your habits, everything to try and make your life better, basically. So I do offer 100% money back guarantee on those because I am confident in my ability to make change for you. But if you don't see any change after three months, I just give you your money back. It's as simple as that. Um, if you want to learn more about that, you are welcome to book in for your 30 minute free call. I will send out a link for that after if anyone's interested. I will be taking on some more clients um, in 2023. So kind of mid January time. <sighs> okay, talking, so much talking. And then keeping an eye out for 2023. I'm so excited. Um, obviously, I know not everyone can do one-on-one -on -one training. It is intensive and it's a big time commitment and it's a big financial commitment. So I am working on other ways to be able to help you guys. Doing, I am currently um, producing my workout program. I'm going to be releasing in 2023. I'm going to be doing more workshops. I'm going to start some kind of membership um, site with like special classes and like virtual classes and one day the goal is to do retreats in person where I can see you guys and correct you guys and we can do yoga and eat healthy and exercise and do our scoliosis correctives together so that is my goals for the future 2023 and beyond so watch this space <laughs> okay Thank you guys so much for listening to me ramble about scoliosis for 55 minutes. I really do appreciate that. And I am here now. If you guys have any questions, now is the, the time to, um, you can take yourself off mute. If you have anything you want to say, I will happily sit here and talk to you guys, but I understand if you have somewhere to go. So let me know. Thanks, Maria. That was really good. Oh, thank you, Georgie. I appreciate you coming. I know it's getting late in the UK. No, it's fine. It's fine. Um, it was really helpful. Um, I definitely do have some questions around exercise stuff. Um, you okay? I have a, I have several. So I I know I mentioned to you before. I'm doing like this Pilates um course at the moment. Yeah. And it's been really good, and I can really see kind of the way the Pilates does really help yeah. i've had two people give me two different types of information about when we do stuff on our back with our core so in the pilates they say like you always want to leave a little like a marble shaped arch underneath your back um because if we're standing in neutral it's it would feel weird if you know how lots of people go flat into the back yeah. for core stuff if they've got lower back issues but if we're standing in neutral that feels very like not natural we always have that like arch there so they tell me that um I've actually done a few PT sessions with Caroline Friedman I don't know if you've heard of her she's written the scoliosis handbook yeah 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 she's very like no your back isn't straight you have like it's uneven because of your the hump of your kind of rib cage so she's actually thinks you should put your back flat into the ground when doing core stuff so I just wanted to know what your thoughts were on that my thoughts on that um would be to keep your natural curve in your lower back so when you when you when you flatten your back when you flatten your lumbar curve intentionally down into the back your neck like your your spine wants to be like this and when you have your natural curve you're going to have that I mean, a scoliosis it is going to be a little bit different, but when you flatten it, you are going to compress the vertebrae as you push it down into the spine. So it's kind of like when you round into your upper back, you compress the vertebrae. So when you're pushing your lower back down, you're going to mm. compress into the vertebrae. And it's not, we want our spine, well, from my idea of training and um, with flowability and, and yoga and things like that, we want to keep our spines in their natural shape as much as possible, especially with scoliosis. And it can, like lying down on the floor, it can make you a little bit uneven and stuff like that. But that's why I like to take a moment to try and correct your spine as much as possible before going into the exercises. 
but but keeping that natural alignment with your lower back because that's also you want to keep your rib cage and your pelvis aligned so if you're slamming your lower back down into the ground it's creating that posterior tel pelvis. Tel, yeah yeah so it's your your rib cage your pelvis is not in alignment with your rib cage okay so that's... yeah so it, it's interesting that she she's saying to flatten it down because I haven't from from scoliosis training. I haven't heard that perspective before, but yeah, it's it's interesting. But from no. yeah, obviously from what I've learned and from you, what you've learned with Pilates as well, we we do want to keep a natural curve in our lumbar spine. Yeah, and I think that's very helpful. And my second question was just hinges, like deadlifts and things like that. How do you is that as long as your spine's fairly aligned? Yeah, All fine. Right. I love hinging. One of the most difficult exercises to teach to people and one of the most difficult movements for people to understand. So if people don't know what we're talking about, a uh, hinge is um, basically when you're keeping your spine, I hope you can still hear me, all right? When you're keeping your spine straight and you hinge at your hips like this. So if you know how to hinge properly, then it's a great exercise because it's going to strengthen your glutes and it's going to strengthen your core. And as you saw, like when I was doing that flowability thing, I'm kind of holding this position and trying to breathe into the concave areas. So the, the hinging is good, especially for building strength in the body, but it's so easy to get it wrong. So, cause this is not what we want to do. So I'm just rounding into my back and rounding into my scoliosis. So just having that, that good awareness and knowing how to hinge properly. But yes, no, I, I love hinging and I love deadlifts. So definitely do them do them properly, keeping your spine nice and long and trying to think of, of your scoliosis, obviously, when you're doing the movement. Thank you. You're welcome. Any, anything else? No, I think I mentioned in the chat, like, um, I guess oh. what you're saying when you're doing weighted, um, like on your side, on your obliques, I guessing that's the same. And if you're on your back doing like toe taps like that. Yeah. Um, sorry, I haven't even had a chance to look at the chat. I was too busy. Channeling. No, no, it's fine. I just, um, but yeah, I figured that would probably be quite similar. Yeah. So there's so many other good exercises that you can do for your core, for your obliques, for example. Um, I would recommend any kind of anti-rotation exercise. So like a pallet press where you're, standing and you're pushing um like you have a cable or something here and you're pushing it out that's going to fire up your obliques because it's stopping you from rotating so that's instead of doing this kind of movement it's, yeah it's working but you're holding your spine straight and you're holding your spine stable rather than getting um that that lateral bending and stuff which is just going to compress the the vertebrae and push you more into your scoliosis okay thank you you're very welcome. Um, anyone else? Hi. Hello. Um, thanks. I uh, love my avocado hoodie. Um, first <laughs> of all, <laughs> um, thank you for doing what you do because Aww. I was diagnosed super late at 17 and my journey was literally, good luck. <laughs> yeah. <Have fun>. yeah. <laughs> so against all odds, I managed to make it to my 30s with like 60 degrees, 60 degrees thoracic, 40 degrees lumbar. Wow. And I'm still upstanding, but I never had something like you. And I yeah. really young people today don't know how lucky they are to have Instagram sometimes. Oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> um I don't squat in the gym for obvious reasons. Um, my like go-to exercise is a weighted hip thrust because I'm like you, I'm a PT. So my awareness of my body is super, super high. Good. Yep. But is there anything else like leg wise that you would like throw in there to like replace us? I mean, squat, you can't really replace it but I'm just so so scared of putting that pressure down on on my spine yeah so it depends what kind of have you what about like a body weight squat have you because 
that's a fair point actually I don't don't really do body weight squats <laughs> um, <laughs> so I was because squats can be good especially um you can start with like a, a chair for example mm. and then just kind of tapping to the chair and then coming back up or holding onto the back of the chair and squatting down like this mm. and seeing how the body moves with scoliosis it is kind of common to squat and kind of come over to one side, side. yeah so that's something to be aware of. So you want to make sure, oh my God, my leggings are so high. It's just kind of they look great, babe. They look great. <laughs> I didn't know I was going to be standing up. <laughs> well, I'm wearing an avocado hoodie. You're good. Um, so that's why you want to try and lengthen and be aware of your scoliosis first. It's good to use a mirror or have someone check your form when you're doing it to try and stay like neutral when you're coming down and making sure you're not pushing into one side more than the other. So checking the weight on your feet, checking kind of how your alignment is when you're going into these kind of movements. As long as your knees and your ankles are okay with your squats and you're not getting pain in your lower back, you don't need to do by big barbell squats. In fact, I, it's not, I, not something I would recommend and it's not something I give to clients is big barbell heavy squats, unless you wanna be a power lifter or your bikini competition or something like that there's no need to do those big weighted barbell squats you can get even more benefits from doing um, like a goblet squat where you're holding just the weight here in fact I love that even more because it makes you use your back the way that gravity works it makes you use your back muscles and your core a lot just holding that weight here and you don't have to go really heavy i don't i used to go really heavy i used to be like i want to be jacked and toned and strong and all that kind of stuff and it just honestly i it wasn't worth it it just hurt my body towards the end of the day and um i started to take more care of myself with my personal obviously you're a personal trainer so you know like you want to do all the big heavy weights and stuff like that but um you don't need to be doing the barbell barbell squats um and you can keep the weight light and just do more reps <laughs> it's yeah. it burns it burns um it you can do things like step ups as well mm -hmm. yeah so any kind of quad knee dominant movement step ups lunges split squats again if you're worried about your balance you can do something like holding on to something lunges i hate lunges but <laughs> but it is that still it's still getting that knee dominant movement um hip thrust obviously great hip dominant movement for your glutes deadlifts again if you're getting your hinging and stuff correct deadlifts deadlifts i really struggle with yeah obviously because i do try and do my scoliosis correctives whilst doing deadlifts and it is so difficult to breathe into the concavity oh and then lift up a heavy weight so I'm... my recommendation for that yeah. would be to obviously not go so heavy yeah um because if you're if you're losing your position then it's definitely time to drop down the weight but what mm. i like to do for myself and with some of my clients depending on the mobility is to do kettlebell deadlifts so either through the middle or two down the side and you can bring the kettlebells onto yoga blocks so you don't have to come down so far you can just kind of hinge to like here and then the and then put them down and stuff like that so you're not coming really deep into your hinge which can create rounding in the back and make you lose your um positioning with your spine so i again i don't do barbell deadlifts anymore i used to I just do kettlebell deadlifts now. And again, they um, I'm not trying to be like a superwoman. I'm just trying to stay strong and maintain my strength. So I love kettlebells are great. But yeah, it can, it's hard to maintain like a yeah. like thinking about your concavity breathing with deadlifts. So I recommend start light and mm -hmm. then build it up from there. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Anyone else? Going once, going twice. <laughs> no, it's okay. Well, that was there were some really good questions actually. So 
that's nice it gets my brain thinking as well so I like it when that happens um yeah this has been awesome and thank you guys for giving me your time and listening to what I have to say um I'm oh, sorry I'm just looking at the questions breathing side line when your side concave side uppermost when you are doing your breathing exercises in side line is your concave side uppermost uh, I'm not quite sure what the question is but my I have two con I actually have three concave sides but my main I do side lying on both sides. I just change the positioning of where the um, sandbag, beanbags, I change the positioning of where the beanbags are because um, on one side I'm laying on my convex side. So I put beanbags right underneath my rib hump and that straightens that side. And then when I'm lying on the other side, I put them underneath because I have a curve here. So I put it underneath here and underneath my lower back as well. So yeah, so it, you got to know where you, but your scoliosis is probably different. So you really got to know where your concave areas are and then how to adjust that. And again, I'm, I'm here to help if you do have any questions with that. Yes, I think that's, oh yeah, we are, we've done Georgie's question. Cool. Okay, well, thank you all so much. That was really, really fun. And I uh, yeah, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your what is the day today? Sunday. <laughs> it all kind of blurs into one these days. Um, I'm gonna have to go out and buy an avocado hoodie because that looks really cozy <laughs> and I want one of those. And yeah, I will I'll speak to you all soon. Thank you for coming. And I'm gonna do another one of these in January as well. So stay tuned and yeah, let's stay in touch. Obviously, you've got me on Instagram. So yeah, here if you have any questions. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.